Mayfield and Beloved presents Camp Here and There. Episode 1, The Beginning of the End. Campers, rise and shine, my little chickadees, and welcome to your first day at camp here and there. The time is 8.63 a.m., the sky is cloudless and bolted, and the oracle fumes emanate from the bonfire at the center of camp are telling me that today is shaping up to be the best day ever. My name is Sydney Sargent, and it's nice to meet you. You know, campers, I was just like you once. Young, frail, unwanted by peers and guardians alike. Slowly dying of secret diseases and fundamentally heartbroken, just like you. And every summer, I was sent away to this very camp, just like you. And now I'm the nurse around here. Isn't it funny how life works? I sure think so. As you've probably figured out, you clever little primates, I'm also your cordial announcer for all the pre-meal updates. This is a big camp and we can't update all of you individually, so the latest and greatest in camp-related news will be delivered via me. On most days, you'll hear my voice broadcasted over the loudspeakers three times a day, once before each meal. You'll find me and my handsome assistant, Jedediah, on the southernmost outskirts of the campgrounds, in that quaint little building among the yewberries. Got scrapes, bumps, bruises, aches, broken bones, split hands, jammed toes, empty eyes. Have you recently realized that you are more mature than your parents, even though you're not yet old enough to live alone, so now you have no choice but to accept the demeaning reality of taking care of your caretakers? Come pay us a visit and we'll fix you right up. Don't mind Jetty if he seems a bit curt. He doesn't talk much, nothing personal. But you can talk to me, though, and I really like to talk. Sometimes I talk too much. Sorry about that. Jetty says he likes it when I ramble, though, in case you're wondering. Were you wondering? Well, now you know. You're welcome. Now, Lucille gave me a list of announcements to make. Uh... Ah, Lucille is your camp director, by the way. You probably won't see her around much. She mostly handles administrative stuff, but, you know, in case you're wondering who that is, she's my boss. Uh, yeah, all right, the usual first day stuff scheduled for this morning, the get to know you games, the orientation lectures, the part where they make you sign over the waivers but won't let you read them, <laughs> etc, etc. Just be sure to stay within sight of your cabin's counselors and don't stray too far into the forest. Also, try not to look directly at the bonfire for too long. It will try to lure you in. The breakfast menu this morning includes scrambled eggs, scrambled sausages, scrambled pancakes, and a bizarre blend of macaroni noodles and melted cow cheese, which the chef... Matthew assures me is safe to eat. Vegan options include loose assorted leaves. That's it. Be sure to appreciate all the fun colors. Matthew considers himself something of an artist. The eggs are purple. And if by some freak chance none of that suits your fancy, there's a cereal bar with goat yogurt at the back of the serving room. Oh, and you kids aren't technically supposed to use a coffee machine, but I won't tell. And uh, one last announcement here. It says to, uh, quote, mind the man in the pink elephant mask lurking in the forest. According to eyewitness reports from multiple camp personnel, a strange fellow began skulking the parameters of the campsite in between last summer and this one. He's been described as not too short and not too old, but definitely extremely zealous. He hasn't hurt anyone yet or set foot on the campgrounds, but the sight of him has been said to incite secondhand feelings of fervor. A directionless sense of almost religious alacrity. An impulse without an object. Mari saw Yu Chen go. A counselor of Cabin Grasshopper even reported a blurring at the edges of her vision, as if the sheer verve, rattling around in her heart with nowhere to escape, was fit to blind her. So, you know, take care and enjoy your breakfast, campers.
afternoon, campers. The time is 12.80 p.m., and so far the first day of camp has gone off without a hitch. And the sun remains quite blinding. I'm sure you're all very hungry after the blind turmoil of the get-to-know-you games, and believe me, I understand. Getting to know people, well, you could say it makes me a little bit cranky. <laughs> so, in the interest of letting you loose, I'll make this one quick. Today's lunch consists of that cheese noodle concoction again, which I remain suspicious of. I doubt anyone's tried it yet, but if you work up the courage, let me know how it is. And I trust Matthew with my life, of course, but the combination of macaroni and cheese, it's unnatural. Ah, also on the menu are candied ravioli, unseasoned popcorn, and Matthew's newest invention, a dish he calls, uh, it's a special secret, baby. Wow, now that sounds delicious. I wish I could try some, but unfortunately I'm afflicted with a nefarious curse which mandates that I eat nothing but buttered bread for all of eternity. Yes, I know, we all love buttered bread. Everyone likes to think they never get tired of buttered bread, but mark my words. After a few years of endless breadsticks, that sickly, savory taste starts to weigh on you. Not to mention the debilitating vitamin deficiency. Sometimes I look at food like beans, rich in protein and complex fibers, and I think... Oh, just the spirit of that tantalizing flavor. The unattainability of it all. Oh. Ah, well, too bad, so sad. It's all right. You kids enjoy your special surprise. Oh, and vegans, uh, you can just eat the popcorn. By the way, Jedediah forwarded an interesting theory to me earlier. He suggested that all the stuff about a pink elephant man might have been just a prank. So, Joshua... You snuck into my office this morning and scribbled that nonsense onto my notes, huh? And you even went so far as to rope Marisol into it. Joshua, you better pray we don't cross paths today. I will salt you like a slug, my friend. Like. A. Slug. But the good news about that, my little field mice, is that you need no longer fear. There is not a man in a pink elephant mask skulking about the forest's edge, eager to swoop you up and fill you with religious fervor. There is no such man, and there never was. All just a joke. Ha 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 And if Joshua tries to tell you otherwise, smack the highest part of his gangly man body you can reach. That guy is wrong in the head. Anyways, your next activity after lunch will be a rousing camp-wide swim. Wow! So hurry up and eat little loves and don't stay in the water too terribly long or your skin will acquire a variety of fun new colors. Also, do your best to ignore the unknowable object which constantly floats in, or perhaps hovers above, the surface of the lake. It's hard to be sure exactly where it is in space or what to call its shape, but we can say with certainty that it's safe, as long as you don't think about it too hard. Oh, and if you'd rather spend your afternoon in a more peaceful way, our friend Counselor Warren of Cabin Tarantula Hawk is going to be holding arts and crafts in the creativity cabin, so you're free to head over there instead. If you do, make me a smiley face plate out of beans. Jetty is telling me that the smiley face thing is typically done with macaroni. Well, he's wrong, but if you'd like to humor him, you can make him one out of macaroni. All right, campers. Well, that about does it. Enjoy your meal. If I'm anything, I am a man of my word. So, here I am once again. Good evening, campers. The time is now 19.05 p.m. and the night is an opaque and impenetrable expanse of impossible evils. My favorite time of day. Now, we'll discuss dinner in a second, but first, I need to address this. There have been all sorts of rumors flying around the campgrounds on this day, many whispers and snickers over whether or not the elephant man is real. Kids... You can trust me not to withhold information from you. Certain members of the staff at camp here and there may complain that I say too much, but you and I know that it never helps to keep kids in the dark. So, please believe me when I say, I seriously have no clue whether the Elephant Man exists. A lot has happened and I'm thoroughly confused at this point. After I finished up the lunch announcements, I left to tear Joshua a new one, but I was stopped by Marisol and she told me something. Something that threw me off quite a bit. She said that what I read about her experience was accurate. She did encounter a man in a pink elephant mask at the edge of the campgrounds, and he did in fact fill her with a blind zeal. But the thing is, she never actually reported it to anyone. So the fact that it was listed among my morning announcements is... odd. 
I asked Lucille if she wrote it onto my paper or if she knew anything about it at all, but she was hunched over her desk in the administrative office and she didn't really have time to humor me. But based on her non-committal grunt, I think it was a blanket no. So I don't think she was the one who wrote it here. She probably wouldn't like me saying all this, but, well, she loves me too much to punish me for it. Either way, campers, you deserve the truth. And the full truth is that I don't know what's going on. Jedediah is still convinced that it's just a joke and that Marisol is in on it. He hasn't even humored the idea that it's real and he's just stubborn like that. And I'd like to be reassured by his unwavering faith in the mundane, but I just can't bring myself to trust that. Not even for him. I can't get complacent about something that could risk the safety of you kids. Ah, forgive me. I might have gotten carried away there. I assure you, my little swamp rats, that there is no need for any of you to be afraid. My confusion doesn't mean that you're in any real danger. I mean, if Marisol's account is true, then the guy doesn't seem especially vicious, right? Just kind of creepy and maybe a little overbearing when it comes to sharing his feelings. At any rate, I am on this case like bread on butter. Did any of you know in my senior year of high school I was voted most likely to get killed of consequence of reckless thirst for forbidden knowledge? To this day, I take pride in that title. And you can take comfort in it, campers, knowing that I'll get to the bottom of this if it's the last thing I do. If you do run into the Elephant Man, though, put that fervor to good use and run. Run to me and tell me everything. All right, moving on. End of day announcements. In honor of those among you who let the mutant bacteria of the lake seep into your epidermis and render it in rainbow, the winner of the Technicolor Flesh Contest was a camper from Cabin Widow Spider named... Orla Clearwater, who now sports a stunning quintuple-toned pelt. Congratulations, Orla! And for those of you who missed the arts and crafts sessions, I did receive a number of very sweet, smiling bean plates. And to the one camper who gave Jedediah a macaroni plate, you little rebel. I like your style. Tonight's dinner is green eggs and ham. Just kidding! The eggs are crimson. How original! Isn't Matthew just the best? Vegans, it says here that you'll be provided with assorted mushrooms gathered from the woods and served uncooked. Well, that's a little sad. Mushrooms are friends, not food. But whatever floats your goats, I suppose. After dinner... Ah. After dinner comes my favorite activity of the day. All of you will gather around the bonfire holding hands for the nightly scene ceremony that will cap off your first day of camp. It'll be your first time inhaling the bonfire's oracle fumes. Oh, I'm jealous. Your dreams will be interesting tonight. Well, that's all you'll hear from me for the day. But don't you cry. I'll be back bright and early tomorrow morning for breakfast. Enjoy your dinner, little loves, and enjoy your evening. Evening. It's 25.25 p.m. I... I know that this is normally the time of night where I put together a daily injury report for Lucille, but nobody came into my office today for anything but prescribed medication, so I think I'm just gonna talk. Would that be okay? Ah, uh, right. You are a tape recorder. You cannot consent. I'll talk then. Yes. I'll talk. And I have much to talk about. Remember when I said that nobody came into my office today? Well, <laughs> that was a lie. It's true that no injured campers came into my office today, but you want to know who did? You want to know who did? Pink elephant guy. Yeah, for real. The freaky guy in the pink elephant mask who everyone's been talking about all day? The guy Jetty said was probably just a joke? Yeah. Just a few minutes ago, he came into this very room. How'd he get in? I don't know. Not a clue. I am supposed to be behind three locked doors right now. But in he very much got. All hunched and eerie, a nightmarish gangle in a suit of dirt and zeal and rosy plastic. Gazing upon this... person. Well, I expected to feel that fervor. That directionless impulse that Marisol described. But instead, all the passion in my soul was washed away. 
The pink of his mask all shiny in the lamplight. It reminded me oddly of Benadryl, and I felt a similar effect to that of the anti-allergen when I looked upon it. In hindsight, I can't believe I didn't try to confront him or even move from my chair, but I truly didn't feel the urge. It's not that the sight of him made me feel calm, not quite. It made me feel complacent, which is very scary to me. I'm a lot of things, but unguarded, unwary, unconcerned, I am never that. To have nonchalance forced upon me, I feel violated. And I believe that if he tried to hurt me, I would not have attempted to stop him. I think I stopped breathing when he took off the mask. Not out of fear, I just couldn't be bothered. The sight of his face made me feel so sedated. And when he smiled, his teeth oddly white and sterile behind strands of less immaculate blonde hair, I just about felt my heart give up. I'm glad that the shadows cast by his mask kept me from seeing his eyes. I probably would have passed right out. Then his smile widened, and he grabbed one of my worms from my desk. A bead of saliva gathered at the corner of his lips as he held her to the light, appraising her. And then he put her in his mouth and began to chew. Slowly, still with a hint of a smile, he was savoring her. And then he swallowed, and without a pause, he picked up another worm and ate again. When that was done, he grabbed another, and then another, and then a whole handful, stuffing them all into his mouth, greedily now desperate to satiate whatever hollow yawned within him. I still can't believe I did nothing. I love those worms. But all my adrenaline had been drained away, and all that I could think was... <laughs> Jedediah was so wrong. At the time, I found that funny. But I don't feel so much like laughing now. After what felt to my pea-saddled brain like an ignorant eternity, he straightened back up, licked his lips, gave me a smile, and walked back out. That was when the fear hit me, and the anger too, flooding over me as if the dam had broke. Right after he left, I heard a knock on the door in the building, which really made me jump, but I reasoned that I'd still be feeling that horrible calm if he hadn't really left, so I steeled myself and opened the door, and it was just a camper. Just a sleepless camper, milling about in her bedclothes. She was just nervous about sleeping in the cabin with others, but not unsettled enough to have obviously passed by any elephant men on her way over. Well, I got her in, gave her some water and some of her anti-anxiety medicine, and sent her back to bed. And that was that. The elephant man couldn't possibly have left through the door without being seen by her, but the fresh pounding of my heart made me feel certain that he was gone. I don't understand it. I don't know. I guess I... Huh? Jetty! Um, hi! Hey, Sydney. Just wanted to, um, check in on you. See how you're doing. Oh. Well, I'm fine. I've missed you, though. Up in that office all night. How's your, uh, project going? <sighs> that bad, huh? Well, you've missed a lot around here. You remember that pink elephant man from the announcements? Yes. Remember how you said he's probably just a joke? Yes. Well, guess what? He's real, Jetty. He's so real. He was here in my study and he was like, he started eating my worms. Like, I I I'll have to get more. Are you hurt? Mm, surprisingly not. Mm. Well, considering that, uh, are, are you sure it was real? You think it might have been a hallucination? But my worms. I, I keep very close track of my worms, Jedediah. I, I know when I'm missing worms. I mean, you don't suppose they just squirmed away. <laughs> worms don't really belong in your office in the first place. Study. Sure, study. Listen, I, I'm just- a And I haven't had a hallucination in years. All that stuff, it's different now. I'm, I'm not really like that anymore, Jetty. I know. And uh, I trust that. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to gaslight you or anything. But you're always on edge as it is, and I just don't want you to stress yourself out about stuff that might not even be a problem. Hmm. Just trust me to know what's real, okay? I think I've earned that by now. Yeah. Thanks. I really appreciate you. Yeah. You too. 
But if the elephant man is real, what are you going to do about him? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, Jetty, you look so tired. So do you. I'm always like this. But you're starting to wilt, and it's unpleasant on you. You should go rest. I cleaned the sheets on your bed, and I used this new peppermint detergent I got. I thought you'd enjoy that. Thank you. <sighs> All right, then. As long as you're okay. I'm fine. A little shaken, but I'm all safe. And you don't need me for anything? Go to bed, Jedediah Martin. All right. <laughs> okay. Good night, Sydney. Good night. I'll be there in a few hours. Hmm. <sighs> He's been like that lately. Tired and spacey. It's not like him. I mean, he's usually pretty good at focusing on something. I'll bet he doesn't even hear me talking through the door. <laughs> Sometimes when I speak to him, I can't help but think he doesn't catch 90% of it. And that's normal. That's just Jetty. But over the past year or so, he's gotten... weirder? Worse? Is worse the right word? I mean, he's never really been an extrovert, and I get it, and we both like our lonesome. But even when we were kids, he was always engaged with who he talked to. Like he enjoyed the conversation. Nowadays, he doesn't even look at anyone but me. And we barely talk lately either. It's hard to get him to say anything. He just locks himself in that office working on God knows what. <sighs> mm. I hope he's okay. I guess if there is some God out there sculpting and reshaping the world in his image. I hope. I hope he helps Jedediah. Good night. Today's episode was written by Blue Mayfield and Nicholas Belove. The part of Sydney Sargent was played by Blue Mayfield. The part of Jedediah Martin was played by Nicholas Belove. Camp Here and There is the sole intellectual property of its production company, Mayfield and Belove. All music composed by Will Wood and produced by Jonathan Maisto. Sound editing by Cut by Frank and Beetle Sprite. Special thanks to our patrons, Emerald, Josie, Eloise, Emily, and Doug Cavendick. For behind-the-scenes material, exclusive canonical content, interactive events, and early episode access, consider signing up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash mayfieldandbelove. Our Discord server is a great place to meet like-minded fellows and discuss today's episode. Find the link at mayfieldandbelove.com. Lastly, if you'd like to support us, the best thing you can do is to spread the word about the show. Thank you for listening to Camp Here and There. And remember, when you die, you will rot.